it's the 8th of November 2019 um, this is going to be an introduction to a journal personal journal and this is something I've uh, been praying about and been an ongoing concern regarding uh, the NHS and my local doctor surgery and a whole amount of cover ups and lies and omissions omissions of of doing what's right, I think, is one of the worst lies, especially when the uh, it's got a, a lawful authority behind it, because then that puts a whole weight upon, voila, me, the individual. Um, so I've written, this uh, journal is about requesting from two years ago now, uh, to have my GP unregistered because I was registered to a GP that I didn't want and I didn't ask for and I was already registered to a GP and they didn't notify that uh, my doctor had left two years after the event so they were backpedalling to cover up their error because I, now this is where I have a witness that there's an intelligence body working behind the scenes because I was visiting uh, another local surgery where, where there was another cover up because I was going to approach the surgery and ask if they had ev any evidence or knowledge of why I was struck off without a reason and what was said and when I was looking online at the site and the address I noticed my own GP was there practicing at the bottom of the rung and bearing in mind she was a senior partner in the surgery I was registered to and as soon as I realised that, I spoke to my dad and said, did you know our doctor is now practising another ha another surgery? And he said, no, I haven't been notified. And he'd, he'd been getting flu shot reminders. So they must have known and they never notified us. Well, the amount of time it takes to send a letter from the time I was visiting that site we got a letter through the post, both my dad and I, saying that we've been now registered to a Dr. Marshall. Apologies for the delay, they'd had a move around. I thought, well, that's not a coincidence. It was because someone was monitoring my activity, got on the, got on the blower, let them know. So there's a concern. There's somebody watching over the concern and covering up their mistakes, because this all ties into my mother's neglect and the willful treatment from this surgery of her aftercare from hospital her palliative care and that was not something that that neither my mother wanted or, or neither I wanted because um, my mum had known the treatment she's receiving in hospital but it was um, lawfully forced upon us to have it on, otherwise my mum would have been kept in hospital and um, and that was all or completely wicked what what my mum experienced from day one and the follow-up care was a, a, totally abusive and, and they were lying covering up their tracks so I didn't want to be registered to have anything to do with this surgery or the, the authority making decisions on my behalf and having that authority and in the future that it's their authority over the patient, the patient's not consulted um, you don't get invited to the care, care plans You're not, the, the patient's not considered, all the care's planned but in private and you, you're just administered what's discussed in private, you don't have an input so um, I didn't want any part of this surgery or the doctor they registered me to so I wrote a letter, replied, responded to the um, registration and said you can I'd like to be unregistered and while I'm at it I would like my medical files uh, updated and corrected and I pointed out two areas that were um, false counsel, they were untrue one was my um, a request for a di proper diagnosis of my car accident. This was following two years after my car accident, um, recovering, recovering from the injuries and the, uh, just the 
demobilizing of it. I was completely tired, I was completely knocked out, I was in pain, I couldn't move my head, I couldn't put my head on the pillow. And two years after, and I started to get back on my feet, I went to see my my surgery. Now, they just brushed it out of hand as whiplash. So I, I went uh, the first time, and then I went back again and saw my, I saw, um, the first time I went, I didn't see my doctor, I saw some other doctor. And uh, I think this is the woman I spoke to uh, recently. And uh, I didn't get anywhere, I just got, dismissed oh you're you know you're it's just whiplash and I said well I'd like an examination and they, they didn't really want to deal with I could tell that they didn't want the burden of it I don't want to deal with whiplash because it's a controversial subject and it's uh, something that they like to cover up because amount of money or, or or they claim the the amount of ambulance chases and all the false claims on whiplash which I can understand the the pressure that that puts on surgeries and the authorities but um, that wasn't my motive to to be a gold digger I wasn't after money or suing I was just after some a diagnosis and then I went back again and saw my own doctor and she said oh, how's your neck doing and I said oh it's still like a a balloon on a stick and I said what I would like is uh, just a proper examination could you get me an appointment in the hospital or something like that and get a proper examination and she said well I haven't got the money <laughs> but you can apply for the money and then you can um, uh, apply to see a specialist so I've done both of those things I've got, I got I qualified for the money and the specialists that they offer because they give you a selection of local services and you choose one now there was only one service and that was um, in order shop from the Virgin, <laughs> Virgin of all people, um, health centre, health clinic, which is like a cattle market. I didn't know this at the time until I visited there. So apparently, I was supposed to see a proper expert and clin clinician on on neck injuries. But I, when I got there, I didn't see that, and that's what I paid for that's what I had to apply for and that's what I paid the money to see this person so once you accept it your money's spent when I get there I don't see this expert I see one of her understudies who is a physiotherapist and before she examined me she said blurted out of her mouth all we can give you is six six weeks treatment I said you haven't even you haven't even looked at me and what, what I qualified so I had um, I, I didn't get up and walk out at the time, I just, uh, she said, would you like some treatment? I said, well, yeah, while I'm here. But she was just like brutish and like um, patronising, putting me down like it's all my fault and my stance and she started talking down to me and I said, oh, yeah, whatever, whatever. And I walked out, went back to my doctor and said, and complained and said, look, I don't, I'm not accepting the rest of the treatment so they'd spent all the money all, all what they offered me was six weeks treatment well I didn't want six weeks treatment I didn't necessarily want any treatment I just wanted a diagnosis to clarify what if I had any internal injuries from the symptoms I was suffering I didn't get that I got whitewashed over so that was one of the cases I wanted remedied because it's on my medical file that the, the Virgin Media Centre would write back to my doctor and that go on my me medical record, it's all my fault, it's all my stance so you're completely whitewashed over so I challenged that as well as the registration and plus an another appointment which is very similar along the very same lines, that's a apply for the money um, I requested to see a certain area um, but, where, but, but when I got the um, when she put in the response she put it in a different area so it threw me off I didn't get to see who I'd asked to see and again we had to qualify for the money to pay for it so the money was spent because I, I accepted the um, what was offered and when on, on the understanding it was going to be for this but when I accepted it it was for something completely different and, I, and, and when I got there I realised and said well this is not what I applied, applied for and again th that that person 
wrote up that I had accepted treatment and medication that would damage your liver and I went back and reported that to my doctor because she brought it she brought, I saw my doctor and she brought it up she said how's your treatment going I said what treatment and then she said well this this treatment from that person and I said well I never I told you I never accepted that person and therefore I haven't accepted the treatment so that's on my medical record so it's on my medical record that I've refused treatment for something I didn't even ask for. So I wanted that remedied. So that's what I, that's what the requ I added to the request. And I didn't want to go and deal with all this lawfully to be, to go through the fight and to, because I know the way medical decisions go, they always go in favour of the medical. It's like a combine harvester. It it crushes ninety percent of the corn. And you dare say anything against the ten percent it helps, and that's what your that's the pressure GPs are under, and that's the pressure the public are put under. I just wanted to avoid I wanted to avoid all that, so I just wanted just confirmation that I'm not registered with that GP anymore. then I could go and in my own time sort out um, another doctor to be registered to but I've had I've written twice over a period of a year the space of a year and I had no response the first time I had a threatening phone call I didn't get a re official response so they can deny that they ever received a letter and, and there's no record of the phone call it's all my word against theirs so they're putting the pressure the lie and lies aggravate my trauma-based injury because it, it, it's one of the things that is a main trigger because it, it, when I was um, violently abused it was all lied about so lies naturally will aggravate me and upset me it's a, it just opens it all up again so th these people are officially lying with the law behind them and I just wanted to avoid any any uh, comfort Con a confrontation that would be a bias against me that caused me further injury even if I went to law and got people to support me behind the law you're, th they're going to cover up their own backsides they're going to cover up their traces and lie and they're going to keep their mouth shut so it puts all the onus on me which is just far too much for me to burden so um, so I've been praying about this well how do I deal with it so I thought well I'm just going to publicly journalize this for my own so if I ever ever come across it in the future I can point point out this video as evidence and uh, have a copy of it and say you watch this first before you make a decision on my behalf just for my own peace of mind and I've prayed about this and put it all on the Lord's shoulders and I think the best thing to do is just leave it to the Lord's to deal with these people because I don't want to go to law with these people it, there's enough burden on our country and the NHS it, it, you know it's, some, it's not my burden it's their burden if they can't stand up to uh, their own government and, and what they're treated with I, I'm not it's like cold porridge I'm not having this cold porridge I'm not I, I'm not Oliver Twist you can have it back I'd rather go hungry I'd rather not have any medical treatment I'm not going to be walked over and lied about, you know, and that's been consistent in my life. So I turned around and said, no, I'm not having it. So I'm um, just going to read a few scriptures. And I've, I wrote on the letter, if I don't hear any, uh, um, I don't want another threatening phone call because I got the first letter. She phones up and, and, and accused me of being straight down my throat. You're paranoid. I said, what do you mean I'm paranoid? I said, have you examined what I asked you to? Because I referred to a medical record at, at hospital, uh, from uh, the local hospital, that w which would clarify what I'd asked to be amended. But she hadn't even looked at it. She just immediately accused me of paranoid. Then she accused me that the that the doctor in um, who referred me to that appointment never even existed. Was never at that surgery. So they, they basically try to make out that I was lying and I, and I got a phone call. I didn't get a written re reply to, to be unregistered. I still didn't get any confirmation. And then a few days later, I'll get two people knocking on the door. And I'm pretty sure one was a social worker and one was a doctor. So I, I believe that they were sent round to, to um, 
find out if they could section me you see and this is the what this is that the dirty handedness they they ring round their friends and send them round they never told me that they were sending these people round they never responded to the letter so there's no record of it it's their word against mine and uh, who do you think's going to I don't you don't get an input in in their word you know so it leaves all the own it leaves you out in the cold and then making decisions and giving false counsel to other professionals on your behalf so um this is a way I can uh, at least protect myself and uh, for my own peace of mind I'm going to read uh, Psalm at Proverbs 11 just just for them just for those intelligent people listening because I know I know that I'm monitored and screened because I I've, I've seen this activity so much in my life how they communicate with one another behind the scenes to cover up their own petty pathetic uh, behaviour and they'd rather lie and cover up the protect their own interest and see a vulnerable person being steamrolled. Well, you're not steamrolling me. Um, I've got the Lord on my side. Uh, Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Uh, Proverbs 19, um, verse 5. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Wrong verse, that's the wrong chapter. 19, verse 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that, he that speaketh lies shall not escape. So, praying about this and these proverbs come to mind. So, I'm going to leave it to the Lord. He, he will deal with these people. And um, I, I just worry about if I need future care. So, what I think I will do is I will I write to the, through the official channels. I'll try the official channels just to write and explain. What what what's taken place and 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 they can deal with it the ob ombudsman, but I really I don't really have faith in because I I know many cases people have gone to the ombudsman and it, you don't hear you don't again you don't get a written response back, and then something happens without your knowledge you're kept in the dark like I'm kept in the dark I don't know what's going on, I thought I might be an impatient well, it's been over a week. It only takes two seconds to, you can get your secretary to pen a letter or type up a letter, you know, you are unregistered at least. That's what I, that's what I requested in the least. I didn't really expect them to change my record. I just, in the least, I expected to be, have official confirmation that I'm no longer registered to those doctors. So even if they have taken me on uh, off the register, they haven't notified me about it. They haven't had the courtesy to let me know what's going on. And these are sort of people that make life or death decisions over people. It's disgusting. So um, I decided just to journalise it. So that what you'll see on this video is, is a, the journal of my first letter I wrote. And now I didn't get a post office receipt. But what I did get from it was the threatening phone call and the people turn up at the door. And then a year preceding that, I, I left it a year, I've still heard nothing from them. And I thought, right, I'm going to have another one more go and I, I'm just going to request. And I wrote a massive letter and I reiterated what had taken place before, what had taken place in the past. So it was quite a few pages. And, and then I registered it to be signed for and it was signed for I, rec I got it all on evidence I got the, the receipt then I've got the checking the website and then seeing that the doctor actually signed for it and it's been a week since uh, over a week uh, a few days in a week since like, that letter and I, again I've had no response so hence why I'm, I'm journalizing this and I'll put this on the beginning of the video so what what this video contains it's not really of any interest it's it's just my personal public journal of what's taken place in my life and and it's for my really for my own benefit not really for viewers benefit but i'm just publicly making and i don't care about naming names and being liable because I, you know i've got no, i've done nothing wrong and and so it it would at least put these, the the owners back on them by exposing them and naming them, 
and uh, so that I'll name the surgery it's Salisbury Road Surgery Alexandra House Alexandra Road Surgery Alexandra House Surgery to Salisbury Road Farnborough so local Frimley Park Hospital and the other surgery was Jenna House Surgery so you know named and shamed I didn't want to name and shame people but um, I'm not having all the onus left on my shoulders to be called a liar, to be called a paranoid and then to see my, my mother suffer their neglect and for them to write up that I'm deluded or I'm unstable or whatever they decide to write, I'm not going to allow it. So I'm journalising it and I told them if I don't hear from them, I will take it further and I will have to, that would force me to publicly um, post it on a public platform. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, just so I've got a backup. I've got uh, um, people are aware of what's going on. You know, I don't want to keep regurgitating all this. It, uh, there's so much left undone. There's so much you got to explain about it. Hence why I'm um, explaining so much. You know, it should have been dealt with at the beginning, but it wasn't. So. It reveals the um, intelligence people monitoring my life and giving false counsel and, and getting other, even getting other people involved in it. So there's this coven, a conspiracy of uh, covering up mistakes and, and, and watching each other's backs. So your online activity is monitored, your phone calls are monitored and um, that's the sort of thing that's followed me throughout all my life. False counsel, so you turn up expecting something and then you, you get shouted at. And when I used to go and visit my mum in hospital, I would be headed off before I got, as soon as I got on the property's grounds, I would be headed off by a security person directly and challenged every time just to let me know. And I'd done nothing wrong, I wasn't. So, Somebody gave them false counsel that I was a nuisance or a danger and they they were they had to be in their bonnet over something and they they vent it on me they come they used to come straight out towards me and single me out of a bustling crowd of people so they must have been monitoring my activity now I'd done nothing wrong I hadn't, I hadn't been um, caused any problems to the hospital I dealt with all the people honestly and politely I never shouted, I never got angry, I just stated my case and arranged that I could see my mother every day whenever I chose and that was agreed by the head matron but every day I went that was challenged by everyone else so I had to go back and get that matron, bring her, bring her to the desk of the nurses and get her to put back what she'd done at the beginning and every time she's like well you know she, did, she didn't really say anything but she could tell that they were undoing what she'd already authorised. So there was a conceit there against me seeing my mother every day because they were, they were covering up her, not caring for her. So I was up against it and then that followed the aftercare and that's all been left undone and it's there, it's there what they write up as, a, as official against your own word and you've got no, you've got no lawful backing, you've got to go and get the backing you got to vet the solicitors, you know. I don't trust all solicitors. They're, they're not with all these secret Masonic associations and the way that they can net and gate. And um, they, won't, they haven't got your interest in heart. They will represent their own interests. And if they're, they're in part of a conspiracy and they're in connection, they're not going to go, they're going to dig a hole for you so you fall in it, compromise you. So um, I would have to seek independent, um, like a Christian or um, a Christian lawyer. But then again, I don't know. You know, I don't, you got you got to vet those as well. And at the moment, it's just too much burden for me without any support, without some backing by my side other than the Lord. Um, it's too much for me to take on. So I'm gonna. That's why I'm journalising this. You'll see the two letters, and then, and this is the the, the week after the second letter that there hasn't been any official acknowledgement or response. So again, they've left me in the dark. 
they their omission is their silence is their their strength because they can say anything oh we were we were busy or you know he didn't give us time or or whatever um but i'm I, i'm simply not standing for it i'm not i'm, I'm not going to stand for being lied about and I'm walked over by all these people and I'm, I'm not their doormat I'm not their little subject you know they're breaking the law and if the law's not working well there's no hope for the, the law or the country so but I'm not going to break the law and um, I'm certainly not going to go to law not if I can help it I'll leave it to the Lord so I'm going to close in the Lord Jesus Christ's name and pray pray for these people pray for these uh the burdens of our country, pray for the leaders of our country because it's looking very bleak, it's looking, it's, it's almost like the, the camel's back's going to break you know, the donkey's back's going to break, it's the final straw All that, you know, there's so many final straws being placed upon the back of our country uh, to break us by the, by the looks of it and all this, all this pressure that's been put on the doctor's surgeries from the European Union well, he said, oh, you can't speak out against immigration. Well, our surgery's got over, had a, f a 3,000 increase within a week. I don't know what it's like today. This was five years ago. And I wasn't getting the treatment then that, 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 that they can commonly say, oh, we're overburdened now. Well, there's no excuse in my case because I was never getting that treatment before they weren't overburdened with all this immigration that's been going on for the last 15 years, pumping all these people in our country just to break the back of our services and then they can privatise it that, that's the game and, and that's what the NHS workers cry out but, but nobody's listening so you know it's hopeless so I am going to leave it to the Lord to judge in his mercy and I pray that I, I've given a witness of, of the Saviour his mercy and grace and I pray that these people um, at least some of them will be saved, and perhaps, uh, they, you know, in their, in, in, their, in their own deceitful way, they start to start to change their mind, and perhaps something will be done in the future. Perhaps I will get a letter in the next few days, because because now I'm doing this, maybe that will, you know, maybe they're waiting for me to make a move. You know, maybe they're waiting for me to, you know, go down the lawful approach, and they're already dug in, expecting that. Well, I'm not going to take that, re. Really. Um, but uh, maybe I will get an official letter. But what I would do is write one more time to the ombudsman, and and just get him to deal with it, and and see where it goes from there. But uh, but I'll leave it on the Lord's shoulders. So I'm going to close there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I thank God that uh, I'm not going through this alone. At least I've got my Heavenly Father and my Saviour. So in Jesus Christ's name, um, I'm going to close there. Amen. Um, quick follow on from my GP registered letter I didn't actually film and post it I just posted it because I knew I've been through that palaver and it, it would only be denied anyway but I did get I did receive a phone call and a response to the letter from a different doctor claiming that I'd seen her previously now I couldn't remember seeing her and what she told me she saw me about I remember seeing somebody else so I didn't think she was being honest and I felt I was being handled on the phone because her immediate response was I was paranoid now I said you've just accused me of being paranoid without um, 
reviewing the evidence you've dismissed the matter out of hand before accepting it so she offered to appointment to resolve it and I I kind of explained I didn't want want to go down there and be opened up to being waffled over and it being a cover up and and she was trying to talk her way round and I said if you're sincere go and investigate the evidence go and check my hospital record where I know the documents exist that show a, a cover up because what actually happened and was documented at one end was completely different what was documented at the other end and, and it was all a cover up of what actually happened which was a preconceived um, event and it uh, you know that's been the story of my life and uh, they're, they're simply not going to own up to it so I got a phone call from that letter I spoke to her on the phone and I, I refused, I, um, there was an open invitation, I said I'd think about it and then I phoned back and said, I said absolutely not, I'm not going down that road and I invited them to, you know, further, if you're serious, you know, deal with this properly, if not, leave me alone, I don't want anything to do with it and, um, and that was that, I've not heard anything at all. Uh, and that's the same story with every avenue, the Department of Work and Pensions, the government, you know, whoever you write to, MPs, they just ignore your letters, you can get, you can get proof all you like, they still ignore it, because they know that you're not going to get to court, you're not going to be able to challenge them in court, you've got to appeal, all you can do as a Christian is appeal against an unjust, just, uh, an unjust judge. You can't take on the world and win and get justice because it's unjust. So you get, you might get your case through the court, but that ain't going to change the court system for other people. It's still going to be uh, unjust, and you'll get your case through, but it, it, you're not going to get full full justice because the world's sitting on a whole a whole pile of injustices. So <laughs> it's hopeless to. Um, really put put your hopes on getting your story heard by by the you know by the people by the law that through that route that might might not happen and if it does happen it's a fight and you, you're going to need a lot of strength to go through that and that's not something uh, vulnerable people have got the strength to do because they can be torn apart and opened up and destroyed before they get there so uh it's not something I would expose myself to about some legal protection, like two legal guardians on my side. I won't get that. They won't. They, they won't provide that for me. Not lawfully. I'd have to get that independently, and then drawn up lawfully. But where do you go for that? Where's the, where's the where's the where's the door with that? You know, with that those people in there. You know, <laughs> they don't exist. Oh, so anyway, so I just wanted to add that to testimony of my letters that sending that letter so this is like a follow on from that I did say I was going to video myself posting it but I decided you know I've done all, I've done all that before I'm just going to post it and if they if I don't get a response I don't get a response no surprise but I did get a response I got a phone call and then I got the admission of any response which is you know the, the normal MO shh don't say anything it'd go away the bloke could die you know you get that that's basically how you treat it you just if you're a problem you speak out against it, against the bigger problem. The little problem's easier to get rid of than the bigger problem. I've had that at work, had that at school, had that at, yeah, everywhere. You know, it, 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 if you go against the grain, you go against the world and the whole world is against you. So praise the Lord for that. <laughs> and hallelujah. So that's my, that's just going to put that on my testimony. Thanks. Okay, uh, this is just a continuing um, video journal from 
GP registration. Now, I've recently, following up from a letter and a phone conversation from a Dr. Earl from uh, a surgery I was registered in from birth and the refusal to accept the GP that they registered registered me to um, I refused that registration because there's been loads of legal cover-ups and uh, false counsel and all sorts I'm not going to go into that here um, but I wrote a letter to Dr. Earl and got a phone call from her. She accused me of being paranoid on the phone and I explained. I wrote a letter back because she invited me to an appointment to sort this all out. So I wrote, put, I sort of half agreed to it on the phone and then, you know, having thought it through, I wrote a, quite an in-depth letter of her you know, going over the points and the history of my case and requesting how upsetting it is and traumatising it is and how triggering it is and that was completely dismissed. I've not heard from the doctor, I've not had an acknowledgement from the letter but today, um, this day, I'm not sure what the date is, uh, September the... Oh, I'm lost, I, I should have checked the date. Yeah. sure anyway um i've just had two people come around i didn't ask them who that wh where they'd come from who had sent them they just said that, that it's following up from uh well they didn't even say anything i said why are you here they said i oh, would come around to resolve your concerns and i said did you get my did you read the letter i sent to dr l and they said yes and I, at that point, I thought, well, if you've read it, you wouldn't have come around my house knowing it, that it aggravates me because I've already expressed this in the letter and you're refusing to deal with it lawfully. And I was very upset. So I just said, look, sorry. But go, um, when she said, uh, I said, have you dealt with it? And I said, well, you know, you should go and deal with it first before you know you come around here don't come around and pressure me because you brought a doctor with her i wasn't going to let them in the house because it, it it's just a, another case of um more chiefs on the end of it it's not being addressed the doctor didn't even acknowledge my concern or write back to me and then a few months later i get a, a cold call at the door with two officials and uh, I refused to let them in. I couldn't possibly let them in. So I just wanted to make a note of that. I, I really wish I should have took the camera to the door, but I was thinking, oh, it's just, you know, a parcel delivery or something like that. And I, I was so on the spot that I didn't question her motives, who'd sent her, how did it, how were they referred to this follow up? And that's why I asked, did you read the letter? She said, yes. I said, well, why haven't you gone and deal with it? And, and that's when I slammed the door on them. I said, sorry, but go and deal with it then. Don't, you know, don't come and bother me. And I closed the door and that was it. And so that's left me really upset and just reinforces um, the omission of they're not going to deal with this. They're not going to le legally acknowledge all the cover-ups and abuse, you know, and the truth, you know, they're not going to acknowledge any any part of it. They're just going to business as usual and carry on. And they send two more people on top who I've never met before. You know, these are strangers to me. The doctor was staring at me. These were both ladies. She was looking at me in contempt. She couldn't look me in the eye. And I thought, no, I'm not letting these people in. They're just going to ram raid me. And, you know, that they come in the name of which to resolve your concerns and not you know that they they weren't obviously here to resolve my concerns because they would have um, acknowledged my letter in the first place and dealt with the concerns that i asked them to and that was to go and examine the evidence that i'd put down in the letter and then to reply to me in writing not to send more strangers around so i'm just making a note of that for my own just for, for my own journal and concern
Ooh, right. Right, the date's the 7th of September, and um, they came around about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm just going to add the date just for my own record and a uh, legal comeback. Right, following on from my uh, letter and um, request to Dr. Dr. Marshall to, after a year, I haven't received written confirmation that I requested to be unregistered. But I did receive a phone call, which there's no record of, so that's, to me, that shows that underhandedness, so they can deny that they've ever phoned or play the upper hand. Um, there's a post office receipt which I paid for a service to be signed for so I know that, it, that it's been received at least by the receptionist whether it will get to the doctor is another matter but there's the receipt of postage that's the uh, There's the uh, reference I can check to make sure online to see that it's been signed for and it's been delivered to where where I stated. So that's the receipt. Uh, I'll keep that in a safe place. Uh, so that's just for the record. Um, I don't know what to expect back. Uh, I am expecting and in uh, an onslaught to be honest possibly somebody being sent round out of concern for my well-being and, and my father's something like along those lines so if that's um, if that happens I'll, I will meet that when when that takes place so I'm um, just recording this it's the 29th 28th 29th of October I didn't get around to posting it uh, two days after I wrote it, so I've posted it, and uh, I'll see what happens. But um, strangely enough, the targeting on my um, from underneath the floor has stopped. It's relented. So, well, praise God for that. But I don't know what the motive is for that that stopping for the last couple of nights I've not had it at all whether it will creep back but um, I wonder if, if the powers that be are withdrawing because they know I'm making this move so there'll be no uh, evidence and anything I say I can't back it up with evidence it just sound cranky so I'm expecting uh, the chains a few uh, strings to be pulled and indirectly through second, third hands, they'll be sending an entourage around with a different agenda to ram roll, ram roll, ram, ram raid me. So I need to st uh, stay strong, not react, and deal with it um, appropriately as it, as it, uh, if it comes. Um, but I'll see if I get a written response and confirmation of acknowledgement that I'm not registered. They won't deal with the other stuff. They won't. They won't come out in in the open and admit it in on paper. They won't admit their part in it. They won't admit that they lied about Dr. Barrack and other incidents instances. So they will um, remain guilty for their participation and not not addressing it. And if they do address it, they they, they should inform me of what they're doing. It's no good tackling it secretly. That just shows. Uh, Dishonesty in covering it up further and, and not 
and not notifying the person that it affects. You know, it's like um, uh, like the prime minister going after these people who are targeted and not telling the people that are targeted that that, the, that they're dealing with it. So it can be brushed over and forgotten about. Uh, so I'm just going to record that. Uh, leave it there. Well, it's just to show you that uh, my letter's been received by Dr. Marshall uh, on today's date, 30th of the 10th, 2019. So I know that she's received it. So hopefully I'll get a confirmation that I've been unregistered finally just for peace of mind so I know that they're not claiming that I'm registered they're my doctor and making decisions professionally on my behalf without me knowing about it that's why I wanted official confirmation so that's it that's my uh, evidence